Hi everybody. Welcome to Evening TV. Dawn on me today was, I was just sort of thinking about relationship history and and I had my birthday on the 4th of July and I had an email from my mother which I had not read and my husband read it and he asked me, have you read that email from your mother? And I said, no. And I said, what did it say? And he, she said, well, she ended up by saying, don't write back anything mean. <laughs> and it's just so funny because I haven't written anything mean to her ever. I, I actually posted, I actually posted the video that was essentially the last thing that I said to her. Basically the last thing that I said to my parents after my son died and in response to, you know, their reaction to that. So, you know, you guys can tell me if you think that was mean. I don't, I don't think it was mean at all. Uh, but anyway, so she's like, don't, don't write back anything mean. And I thought the very, very last thing that I said to her was, I, I left her with questions. She said something about, um, with the way that you are so angry at all the family, you know, we don't know what to do. And so, the way, you've, you, the way you've turned your back on all the family. And so I just left her with questions. I don't remember doing that. When did that happen? You know, how did, how did, tell me about that. How did that happen? And she never responded. And so that was basically where, where it left off until this. So, but what I realized was, I realized that because the, the family accuses you of doing these things that you weren't doing, you get, you can get a little paranoid about admitting, admitting places where you were wrong, where you did do things not necessarily right or good in a relationship. And this was true of me. I, there are places where I was messed up in relationships, not with her, not with my family, but I had romantic relationships where I was the problem, where I was the problem. And one thing I recognize for sure is I have a good marriage now, but the person that I married to is someone I could not have been married to before, is someone I could not have a relationship with before because I would have sabotaged it. I would have definitely sabotaged it because he's just way too nice of a guy. He's way too good of a guy. He, I just didn't know how to be with someone this loving and this generous. Um, and so there, and I, 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 I kind of have this pang, this kind of feeling of, you know, because I generally think of myself as a really nice person and a person who, you know, in all these relationships that I've talked to, I've shared about in all these, you know, relationships I've basically talked about, I was a good person with good intentions and I was, you know, pretty victimized. But that's not my whole relationship history. There were, there were relationships where I was the abuser. I, I realize that now. Or maybe not completely the abuser, but definitely I was contributing to dysfunction. In other words, I wasn't the entirely in, full of integrity, good person with all the best intentions all the time as I was, say, in my marriage. Granted, I was younger because the, these relationships were all before my marriage. So I was quite young, in fact. But, you know, like say my very first love, my very first relationship, I met in my senior year of high school and we dated basically off and on until I was about 21, 21, 22. And he was a really good guy. Uh, in fact, you know, probably one of the best people that I had dated, I'd ever really been involved with. And I'm sure, I think that he did love me. Um, but we did do things to each other. We were, we were mutually, we became mutually dysfunctional. We were also, we, we also had a lot of mutual love, but we did, we did sabotage the relationship together. There was cheating and infidelity. He, he cheated first, but then I did it too. I picked fights, you know, things like that. It was immature, it was young behavior, but there was definitely a sabotaging that went on. Here's what actually ended up happening is I, I ended up uh, at work getting involved with my first abusive relationship. And what, what happened was that this guy that I met at work, with him I couldn't behave that way. With him, I could not act up. I could not behave the way that I did with my, with my boyfriend. So I liked myself better. I liked myself better. I was a nicer person because he was so mean. And he, was, he wouldn't have put up with the ways that I was, the ways that I was not so nice to my boyfriend. And so 
it was familiar to me. That reminded me, that seemed like something intense. It made me, it made me feel safer. That's what it was. My, my boyfriend was so nice and caring and loving, but he didn't, he didn't control me. He didn't let me do and be whoever I wanted to be. Well, this was not familiar to me and it was too, I was too insecure for it. So I met up with this, I met up with this guy who was, I knew I couldn't, I knew I couldn't act up that way. But I said I had three abusive romantic relationships that took place, they were right, they were in a row, but they took place over the course of about 16 years. It was my 12 year marriage and then a two year relationship on either end. Well, this was the very first one. What I remember about that relationship was that the way I look back on it, I did a lot of codependent things, I did a lot of, uh, you know, I didn't practice good boundaries. I, you know, I did a lot of things wrong that we talk about on this channel, but I wasn't being a bad person. I wasn't being a, I wasn't being a, a person that I didn't like, which is what I was doing with my nice boyfriend. And so right around this time in the, in that period with that boyfriend, right? So basically up until the, and there were a couple others that I dated intermittently. We basically were off and on um, until 22 was when we finally broke up. But in there, in that period, between, you know, in my early 20s, before I got married, I had, you know, several really nice boyfriends, really nice guys. And I had, it. so really, truly before before um, my husband, I had no one had ever broken up with me. I had always been the one to break up, and so that's another reason why that, that was all so new, new to me. I got I got my car, I got I got paid back in spades because <laughs> I had never ever been broken up with before, and I got really broken up with with my husband. There were about you know three really nice guys before this abusive relationship where. You know, I wouldn't call myself an abuser, but I definitely, I wasn't living in integrity. I wasn't the kind of person that I really wanted to be. I wasn't sweet all the time and honest and complete, because I didn't know, you know, I think part of it was, is that I was trying to, it was immature, and trying to instigate them to rein me in, to take, to, to treat me like maybe my father did. I really was on the hunt for an abuser. You know, you want to kind of beat yourself up because you think, well, why didn't I just pick a nice guy? There were plenty of nice guys out there that were interested in me. I didn't know how to be with a nice guy. And so I was sabotaging nice guy relationships. And so I was destined to be with an abuser, de destined to be with one, because I was almost trying to make nice guys into abusers. You know, I was, I was really uh, doing things to try and, you know, to try and get them to crack down on me, you know, like not let me do that. Not, you know, basically make me be a good girl. I felt like I needed control. I felt like I, for my, because I was so insecure, I wanted them to tell me that, you know, because to me, love was, love was you meet my needs. I did, you know, you are devoted to meeting my needs. I tell you how to be, I tell you how to, I tell you who I want you to be and you be that and there's all these rules that you have to follow, and that's how I that's how I grew up, and that was love, and that's what was love was like to me. So when I met these nice guys that didn't want to do that, I was too insecure, and I tried to make them do that, and I tried to make them do that by misbehaving. I realize that now, and I kind of I want to say I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to say I'm sorry, guys. All you guys out there that that I that I did that too. There, I, I can think of about three three guys that I just really, you know, they're really nice guys. And I'm sure that they have really lucky, happy wives now, and they probably turned out to be great husbands and great fathers. And you know, um, I got paid back, so that you could, you know, if you if you felt like you know, I hurt your feelings or something. I definitely got my, I, I definitely got, got what was coming to me. Um, and so, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a super bad person. I wasn't, wasn't a really super bad person, but I wasn't, I wasn't the person that I wanted to be. And so that was just it. You know, this is the thing. I, and I came up with this theory back then, and I, I believe it is true. And that was that, you know, we aren't, we don't break up with people because of, of who they are, we break up because of who we are with them. 
and that and that was true because I really I liked myself when I was with these sort of controlling abusive men I, li I like myself I wasn't I felt like I was a nice person I felt like I was a good person it went too far because I it, it, you know stay in long enough and then pretty soon you almost are a mousy person you almost are a person if you start listening to them too then you start believing you'll be like completely um, submissive and doing anything they want and you still can't please anybody so you end up you know it goes too far but when I um, with my the very first abusive relationship, I left that relationship feeling like, you know, I felt like I was really a, a, a good person, and he and he did too. You know, it was it was agreed on that he was the abusive one, and he was he was abusive. But um, I I was more comfortable with that, that's for sure. So anyway, you know, I was just dysfunctional. I was just dysfunctional. It wasn't just luck, it, I, and it wasn't just that I was just the target either. I was targeting them too. You know, I realized that I was targeting them too. I was looking for what's familiar because in our brain, what's familiar registers as right. You know, what feels like to us as we think of it as chemistry. Oh, this feels so right. We think of it as chemistry, but what it really is is familiarity. Well, if you've been raised in an abusive home, familiarity is not a good thing. This is just something to be aware of in yourself. Something if you want to be completely in integrity. You know, I think what was happening was that it was not, it wasn't feeling completely true to me. So I thought, you know, I'm not, I wasn't just like this perfect person. And I was like, okay, I was kind of a crummy person, but not to the people calling me that. I was a crummy person to a couple of these guys early on. Like I said, I was young. A lot of it had to do with immaturity and getting to know myself and so that. So my relationship that I'm in now is definitely a relationship that is successful largely because of my age. You know, largely because I went through the whole thing. I figured out what I really needed. I was, I was able to love myself enough to say that I deserve to know that I deserve love and to I was also at a, a threshold where I was I had absolutely decided I'm not ever going to put up with any any more abuse you know I had decided if a relationship is not making my life better it's making it worse if I'm crying and upset in a relationship it's not working for me I need to be happy and I need to be able to see how this person is making my life better now right now because in my marriage it was always about potential it was always about you know, we're getting through this now. It was always getting through something. I spent my life, I spent my first, you know, <laughs> four decades practically, um, it's certainly three decades, all projected on um, later. It's gonna be, we're gonna be happy later. I'm gonna be happy later. With my, um, you know, in childhood it was, my mother wanted me to grow up. I couldn't grow up fast enough, and so I was going to be acceptable later when I got older. I was going to be acceptable when I did this thing or that thing. I would be acceptable. And um, then when I got in these relationships, it was always like, we're getting through this hard time, we're getting through this thing, and it'll be better later. You know, and here's the other thing, too, is with people like me, love bombing can be a little bit different because I wasn't love bombed in a traditional way. Some of what I, t I, t I have my early dating stories, and my two first early dates, those those were not love bomb experiences, I wouldn't think anyone would say, that they were love bomb experiences necessarily. They were a little bit, but there was definitely immediately mistreatment. There was there was immediately, I mean, the very first thing he did to me was lie to me and set me up with a, a big bogus lie. And then on the second date, he walked, he ran out on me on the date, you know, and these were things, these were abusive things that I overlooked. And so, you know, I was basically, I was sort of looking for an abuser. I didn't know that's what I was looking for. I didn't know, I wouldn't have called it an abuser for, you know, certainly. But, um, but I just, I didn't know how to do calm. I didn't know how to do calm and how to do respectful and how, you know, to me that was too loose. It was too loose. It made me feel too insecure. I needed someone who, who, who I was, always always concerned about always had to be who I had to be thinking about and who was there was always something going on with them it couldn't just be easy because I was too insecure for that and so if you're a young person watching my channel really watch yourself for this kind of thing because it 
it, I, and I have seen this in my sons too, by the way. I have seen that they have, they, they have tended towards these kinds of relationships also that are filled with emotion. It's dysfunctional, it's not good, it's immature too, and it's just a waste of your energy. So really think about, be honest, you know, it's dishonest too, for the other thing, it's really dishonest. You're not going for what really is, what your real emotions are. You're doing something that's covering it up, you know, covering up what's real and making a bunch of you know, frenetic energy that's distracting you from what really is going on. And it's a fear of intimacy. You know, it really is a fear of intimacy. It doesn't seem like it. It seems like it's really passionate. It seems like it's really, you know, um, exciting or something. And because there's usually a lot of tears, a lot of makeups and breakups and all that kind of stuff, but it really is not, not intimacy. It's, and it's, it's not love either. I just was too sick to know how to do it, you know, and so I, I owe those guys an apology because I was, I was a handful. I really was a handful. The, I, you know, if there was anybody that I ever abused in any kind of relationship, it would have been those, those early romantic relationships. I think that I, um, you know, I was just a little, I was too broken, too dysfunctional, and I made a lot of mistakes with those guys, and I'm really sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, so anyways, just wanted to kind of bring that up because you know, we can kind of sound like, you know, we're, we're so perfect here all the time, and, and that wasn't the case. You know, we, if we have been victims of abuse, we also know how to abuse. And this is, this is how also kids get mistreated and things like that. And, um, you, know, you, you, so you, you know, you want to make sure that you're really honest with yourself and ask yourself, you know, where are places where maybe you have been a little cruel? Or where, have you, where do you have some impatience? Or where do you have some, you know, some places where your abuse has affected you in different ways, in ways other than the ways that you that you can really handle. You know, we can comfortably talk about that it's made us into this, you know, codependent sort of empathic person. That's because that's that's palatable to, to nice people like us. But you know, there there were times when we weren't that empathic, we weren't that we were kind of mean, you know. We were we were trying to create drama, you know, and we outgrew it. Thank heavens, you know, we outgrew it. This was like more than my half of my life ago, but still, it's nothing I've really ever said. And so I felt like, you know, even to be honest with myself and, to, you know, talk to any young viewers or to talk to, you know, anybody who might also have that experience, you know, nobody is 100% good or 100% bad. And so sometimes it seems like they're 100% bad, it surely does, but anyways, but, you know, I wasn't 100% good, and, and neither are you, and that's okay, that's all right, we're doing better, we're learning all the time, and as I always say, the, uh, the most important thing is to just do the next right thing, you know, with what, you do the best you can with what you know, and, you know, I never intentionally, this is one thing, I never intentionally set out, I never knew that that's what I was doing, I was never intentionally, you know, doing any kind of plotting to hurt somebody, it was never that, it was just, I was just dysfunctional, I was just dysfunctional. You know, I was broken and dysfunctional and I had to learn my way out of it. All right, you guys, thanks a lot for listening and I will talk with you very, very soon. All righty, bye-bye.